All right, well, enough with the fun geometry. We got to get back to some of the grunt work with the math. The statement reads, earlier, we began with the potential of a perfect dipole, whereas, in fact, we were dealing with physical dipoles. Remember, R has to have some length. It's not just perfectly zero. Uh, show by the method used in Chapter 4 that we, nonetheless, get the correct macroscopic field. Again, the perspective on which field you want, micro versus macro, does matter. All right, let's jump in. The solution for this is, as in chapter four, we want the average of the uh, of the field, so B equal B out plus B in, where B out is due to molecules outside a small sphere around point P, and B in is due to the molecules inside the sphere. The average B out is the same as the field at the center, and for this, is it is okay to use the potential mu naught over 4 pi m cross uh, script r hat over r, script r squared since the center is far from all the molecules in the question. And then a out, we use the same thing, just we integrate from outside, everything outside the space of question. All right, so then the average field of Bn is mu naught over 4 pi 2m over r cubed, where the m is the magnetic dipole is just the volume times the magnetization, so 4 pi, big R cubed, big M. Thus, the average uh, field with big M um, is 2 pi, or excuse me, 2 mu naught, big M over 3. That's just a direct substitution with the volume of a sphere. But what is left out is the inner, is the, what is left out of the integral A out, the vector potential, is the contribution of a contribution of a uniformly magnetized sphere to with to wit uh, two thirds mu naught m, and with this is precisely what B n puts back in. So we'll come we'll get the correct macroscopic field using the vector potential formulation of mu naught over four pi m cross script r hat over the script r squared. Well, that's convenient.